getting across like the education around how to do this, I think is as big of a challenge, but also as important as like educating on the internet back in like the 1990s, 1980s, like the early 2000s. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Future Hour. Today we're so, so excited to have Skylar from Interior Foundation to be on this interview. Oh my God, thank you so much for taking the time. <laughs> cool, great to be here, great to yes. be here. Yeah, Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, what do you think about the event so far? Uh, I think it's been awesome, I think it's been awesome. First time in Italy, so that's cool. And um, yeah, awesome to see the Italian Ethereum community coming together for this, uh, for this event. And uh, yeah, cool to see that it was just really created by the Ethereum community here right. as well. So like, I mean, like we're coming from the we're from the Ethereum Foundation, right? I'm coming here, but like, we had no part in creating this essentially. Yeah. Like, it was all just made by the, the community here. So yeah. awesome to see that it's like actually come together and like there's like talks and like, there actually is like a significant Ethereum community here. Right. Yeah, yeah. and I really feel like this event is very uh, festival, very La Familia vibes. That La everyone, Familia vibes. That everyone, <laughs> that everybody is willing to talk and exchange ideas and helping each other out. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And I think a lot of people here are meeting for the first time, others who are from Italy, Italy and who are also in the Ethereum community. And so right. I think that's going to be like the, the catalyst for hopefully something impactful. And right. yeah, hopefully we see a lot more spaghetti eats happening all I around know. Italy here. Yeah, yeah, so, I know. Such a great name, such a great uh, logo <laughs> as well, right? So coming back about you, Skylar, would you mind sure. sharing with us a little bit? How did you get to where you are today? How did you get into the industry? Yeah, yeah. So actually, I would say started maybe when I was I was eighteen. I was in college. Um, I was studying like programming, and uh, my friends told me about this thing called Bitcoin, and I was like, "What the hell is that?" And uh, basically, started to uh, started to dive into dive into what is Bitcoin, and like as I was learning how to program, started to do all my projects on mm-hmm. on Bitcoin. In fact, like my first like programming project ever was like in twenty. 13 working on like a Bitcoin trading application oh, that, wow. uh, that worked with, uh, in 2015, that worked with um, Mt. Gox. If you're familiar oh, with no way. Mt. Yeah. Gox, all the way back there in exactly. Japan. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. So that's um, crazy. Without going without, needless to say, that doesn't work anymore. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, basically that's how I got into like the Ethereum, or sorry, the Bitcoin community. Yeah. And then afterwards, like learning about the Ethereum later on. And that really fascinated me because like as a developer, being able to program right. on like in like a decentralized fashion, not just to have the currency in a decentralized fashion, an unstoppable fashion. Like yeah. that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So dove into the theorem space after that. Wow. How did you, I'm super curious because I was uh, around in the industry at that time too. How did you feel or what are some of your thoughts back in 2017 when the ICO boom really take off? Were you surprised by it too? Or we kind of see it coming? I would say I was like, I was surprised, but also I think skeptical about it. Like yeah. I'd say, I would say, yeah, like a skeptical in general about a lot of the different like things that they promised. And I think it turned out to be true. And in some ways, I actually think it's a very like it's analogous to what we're seeing today with the NFT craze. Like right. I think the NFT craze is sort of very similar to the ICO boom. Absolutely. Like and uh, particularly also in that like beneath the ICO boom was the underlying concept of ERC twenties and yep. the ability to create a token to represent any sort of project you're working on. And that concept is still powerful and is still used today. But the 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 concept of and like with NFTs as well, the concept of ERC seven twenty ones, like being able to have digital property rights is still gonna be super useful Absolutely. in the future, even if yeah. maybe a lot of these PFP NFT profile pictures I think are gonna go to zero. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Probably, yeah, like you just said, exactly like that. I see all the percentage, right? Maybe like 80, 90, or even 95% of them, they are just not going to be their parents. Right, exactly. Right. But the underlying technology of like having like the ability to to track like digital property rights and have like unique digital goods on yeah. a, a credible, like censorship resistant um, yeah. system, like that is powerful. And yeah. that will remain, and that will be able to be like, that'll change the world in the future. Yeah. But your, your, I don't know, random. Penguin profile picture, maybe yeah. not. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. And also, there's a, another social and culture aspect of it too, right? When something has become so popular, all the mainstream media talking about it, also brings so much attention of all the artists that maybe during their day to day life is will be not that likely that they'll be hearing, will be super interested in the Ethereum, right? But because of uh, this NFT hype, they actually bring their attention, they now they're 
looking into it from true for their own true reasons. Definitely, there's definitely some benefits that, benefits that come from it. Like it is, has opened the world of Ethereum and, and crypto to like a whole new demographic, and that is awesome. And I do think there is like potential in like the use of NFTs in art and supporting artists and Absolutely. in like, ha- and like especially if like, you're a digital artist or pro- having like proofs yeah. of authenticity around like physical yeah. pieces of artwork. Um, yeah, maybe I'm just a little um, bearish about like the NFT, like yeah. the hype around like I know. random projects, I know. but that's all my personal opinion too as yeah. well. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so follow up with that, do you have any thoughts or quick comment about like music and NFT? Ah, music and NFT. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't play an instrument. Uh, I've never learned to play one. <laughs> so I can't really. say I'm very, very musically inclined. Yeah, and nor yeah. am I, I don't know I really follow much of the music scene, to be honest. Right. But uh, um, I do think there's actually definitely a potential there, right? Like right. if you think about like what, what NFTs are, like at the, at the basis of it, I would say that they're like the ability to have digital property rights. Like Absolutely. digital property rights that um, like anybody can trust, anybody can believe, and you can verify. And I think that also like right now we're seeing that apply to like to like uh, digital artworks, which I think is the most like simple manifestation of that. Right. But yeah, music I think also is, is definitely an applicable way to do it. Absolutely. Um, I think it's more complicated yeah. and might take more time. Yeah. And there's maybe a bigger, like there's definitely bigger existing players that would need to be disrupted for yes. this to take place. Record companies, exactly. like Spotify, YouTube right. music, exactly. everybody, Apple music. Exactly. Yeah. But there are some cool projects working on this, like Audius is one, yeah, Audius. I think like, uh, there's another one, um, Audio.xyz, I think I'm sorry. I see okay. recently. Yeah. Some other new projects, and I yeah. think that could be definitely a big, a big. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Because I mean, like, arts, yes. However, I think personally for me, music is like part of my life, right? I don't really play instrument, but it's something I listen to every day. Totally. However, we're totally super used to that streaming old music for free, right? And that is something maybe for. It may take some time to change or be a way to incentivize people to, you know, get used to like music and MTs and whatnot. Totally, totally. Yeah, it's definitely true. It's interesting. Yeah, I'm not really sure how it would, how it would play out, right? Because right. like the, you have like, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think, but I think the underlying like one of the benefits of it being used towards like supporting artists who you yeah. believe in. Yeah. And maybe there's some sort of like a, even like prediction market way that you can like predict like so you're supporting an artist early. Yeah. And if you support an artist early, that ends up like being very popular later on, and yeah. you helped contribute to that success because you supported them earlier. Maybe you actually have some sort of financial incentive as well, yes. to like a reward for doing yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. I heard about like something like I know we're slightly going on the tension here, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but I heard about like something like it could be in the form of fan token. Let's like, say if you really love us, support this artist, and you um, contribute and purchase her NFT at the very beginning, and maybe that maybe the first ten people who purchase it, they get to go to like three of her concerts and have backstage pass access or something like that. Totally, right? Could be. So totally, yeah, yeah. A lot of possibilities. A lot of possibilities. It's not my expertise yeah. field. Yeah, yeah, I, I really don't know much about music. Yeah, yeah, teams, yeah. But I think there could be something there. Yeah. Absolutely. So with that said, right? Earlier we talked about that you're super passionate about education, right? And would you mind share with us, you know, your expertise and your value that bring to the community when it comes to education? Sure. My main role is, is organizing conferences and organizing right. events and so yeah. and supporting other events that take place around the world wow. that are focused on, on education uh, of Ethereum. And I think that's super important because it's a complex field. Like yeah. it is a, it is a, we're working on a, a, a paradigm innovation that will like change the way that like, people around the world do Absolutely. things you know, on a daily yeah. basis. Yeah. And like that's, with that comes like a change in your mental model and mm-hmm. like a lot of times it's really foreign to a lot of yeah. people. And so getting across like the education around how to do this, I think is as big of a challenge, but also as important as like educating on the internet back in like the 1990s, Absolutely. 1980s, like to the early 2000s. And like you can see today how much, first of all, the internet has had an impact, but also how, how important it was to educate on that for yeah. especially like those who are coming up younger, yeah. but also our parents, our grandparents, like everyone is on the internet today. And if you're not, like you're, you're definitely missing out on some things. Absolutely. So I do think like the education we do right now around Ethereum specifically um, is targeted towards those who are both like new to the ecosystem, yeah. trying to learn about the values of like such as resistance, of, of, of transparency, of open source, things yeah. like that. Um, as well as like educating those who are like are in the ecosystem, but maybe yeah. aren't fully caught up with a lot of the changes that are happening within like the Ethereum uh, protocol, the yeah. Ethereum research, right? right? Like Ethereum has been changing a lot over the years. That's yes. that's no everyone knows that, 
there's a lot of like um, outstanding issues that we need to solve, like for instance, yeah. gas fees, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and there's reasons why like that is a problem on Ethereum, and it's because we don't sacrifice decentralization mm -hmm. on the chain. Um, uh, and like we have solutions that exist out there today, like right. layer two, so scaling through rollups and things like that. And I think educating on that right now is some of the most important stuff that we can do. Uh, and in fact, I have a talk tomorrow about that more specifically. Absolutely. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to attend that talk, right? So with that said, we're definitely going to be there at the talk tomorrow. And, uh, you know, super excited for that. With that said, what else some other one or two conferences that uh, you will be attending? Ah, nice. One or two, man. I think I might be attending. I don't know. Like, There's, there's probably, I would say... That I'm aware of, maybe the rest of this year, there are probably like 30 or 40 Ethereum conferences yes. that are happening throughout I'm gonna the world. Are going to go to all that? Like, no way, I couldn't do that. Yeah, I mean, right. I would, I'd be in two places at once. Right? I know. Yeah. Um, but, and the coolest thing about that is that they're all like community oriented. Like community also like created, I'd say. So it's like yeah. not the Ethereum Foundation coming in right. and saying, we want a conference there. Yeah. It's like the Italian community saying, hey, we want to create a conference and let's call it Spaghetti. And like, yeah. that's the coolest thing. Yeah. So I'll probably be at maybe a few more, which might be, right. um, I don't know, ETH Barcelona could be cool, uh, ETH CC, and then definitely DevCon in, uh, yeah. in Bogota. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which I'm biased because I'm also helping plan that one. So. Uh, <laughs> nice. When's that? It'll the be in October. October? Yeah. Okay. So that's awesome. the next big one that we're planning as well. Awesome. From the yeah. 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 Awesome. I think this is a perfect opportunity to shift to call to action, Skylar. Ha -ha. Your Twitter handle or maybe if there's a like, domain for people to like get the tickets for Yeah, like, yeah, uh, sure. Well, I guess if you have questions specific around like roll ups or, or education or like anything yeah. about Ethereum, you can DM me on Twitter, like Skylar at Skylar underscore ETH, uh, S K Y L A R. And then uh and then for following stuff about DevCon, you should yeah. definitely follow at EF DevCon, Diva the DevCon Unicorn, okay. uh, and she'll tweet out about uh, tickets okay. and things like that when they're nice. available in the next month or so. Nice. Awesome. Also, awesome. hope to see you guys, uh, all yeah. of you who are watching like, at future conferences. Uh, I know. I know. We're super excited. And I just want to say thank you so much for your time and uh, being here and really like showing what you guys um, like really taking the time to communicate uh, and uh, build this relationship with the community, right? Because it's just super great that we are all in this together, that we are all supporting and sharing knowledge, share our individual, like our strength, our perspective into the community, right? Because it's not really one small group of people that are building this, but uh, every single person that will come to the event play a part in the community. Absolutely. It's, so, it's a collective journey. Exactly. Yeah, well, Thank you so much. I would like to, you know, keep in touch and get you on a further conversation, right? Like break it down to something with sure, sure. Dive more, dive more in depth about rollups or whatnot. Right? Absolutely, right. Yeah. absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Oh, also, one last quick question, just for my personal curiosity: yeah. How, while you're traveling so much, right, so many meetings, how do you make sure that you keep updated with whatever so many a million things going on in uh, the ecosystem? I mean, Twitter. Twitter is like yeah. Twitter is the Bible. Like, I feel like I don't know. Yeah. You have to, you have to like stay on there all twenty four seven. Uh, and beyond that, I mean, like researching, I mean, keeping up with posts. So, like, Week in Ethereum News is a okay. newsletter that I would recommend everyone suggest to subscribe to. Okay. to. Um, there is also, like, reading every one of Vitalik's posts is, like, essential. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Every time Vitalik comes out with a new post, like, it's, like, going yeah. to probably change your mental model and, like, yeah, you really think yeah, hard yeah, about yeah, yeah. it. Um, so, I think those are essential readings. But, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a continual challenge to keep up there. Yeah, yeah, no, that's the fun part, right? It's, like, it's really this rabbit hole. It's incredibly deep, so... Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Well, Skylar, thank you so much and uh, keep in touch. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. Cool. Jazzy, Skylar, <laughs> signing off. See you later. All right. Peace.